In today's Japanese auto news, Toyota is teaming up with Amazon of all things to conquer the world. And also the Japanese authorities want Honda and Nissan to merge. You can't make these kind of things up. <laughs> Welcome back Luxuriously, my name is Kirk. If you're new and this channel is dedicated to Japanese autos, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you won't miss any of my upcoming videos. Heading over to Toyota Press Room, Toyota and Amazon Web Services collaborate on Toyota's mobility services platform. What does all this mean? So this is to help Toyota engineers develop, deploy, and manage the next generation of data-driven mobility services for driver and passenger safety, security, comfort, and convenience and Toyota's cloud-connected vehicles, which is all of them. Every single vehicle Toyota makes now, to my knowledge, is connected through the cloud. They all report back. They all ship, share data uh, with Toyota and the dealerships. So these services will enable Toyota to collect data from connected vehicles and apply it towards a vehicle to design and development. New contextual services such as car share, ride share, full service lease, and new corporate and consumer services such as proactive vehicle maintenance notifications and driving behavior-based insurance. So there's a lot of thing here. I'm just gonna take a bite out of that driver-based insurance or behavior-based insurance. They're going to be monitoring the G-forces and probably the time it takes for you to step on the gas pedal when the light goes green. This is how next level this data mining is getting. Not only Toyota, because it goes much deeper than that. All these automakers are big brother now. They're looking inside at the car, what's going on, how they're driving, what kind of G-forces, how safe are they responding. And all these cars now have like road sign assist, or at least all the Toyotas and Lexuses do really. So if the speed limit is 65 and the car says, well, and you're going with 75, they're going to be like, oh, you know, we're going to report this back to the insurance companies and you're not going to be able to get that same insurance that you've had because you're just not safe driver. Like it makes me sick that this is what this is coming to, but that's what my gut feeling is telling me. Hey guys, smash the like button. That will help me so much with the YouTube algorithm. And I'm still working on that Hakone 8.6 video. So yeah, stay tuned, smash the like button, let's get back into it. Now what's this about? Vehicle design and development. I think for the most part, that would only apply to electrified vehicles and autonomous vehicles. I don't see how that, that data mining really it helps with producing a better internal gas combustion engine experience. I really think it's gonna be down to high level autonomy as well as electric. Uh, the programming of electric cars in the future. Now, something we don't see a whole lot here is car share. People really don't share cars here. So we see it with a few rental services, things like that. But other than that, we don't see a lot of it. Uh, ride share is becoming more common, but still pretty few and far between, at least here in the States. Full service lease, I wanna talk about this just for a bit. There are parts of the United States where automakers are trying this out. I know Lexus is trying it in certain parts of the country. Um, in the larger cities where they have a full service lease. So that includes your base payment, your taxes, that's gonna include your wheel and tire service, it's gonna include your insurance, and probably some sort of lease protection. So they're gathering all that data to put together a full lease program. That's what the entire automotive industry needs to be looking hard into is a full leasing service. You just pay, let's say $500 a month, and I can get in and out of this car, let's say, uh, six months from now, I can get into something different, but I don't have to worry about changing my insurance, changing the registration, all these different things. That would be ideal, but who knows? We don't live in a utopia in Japan, although they are a little bit more forward in the country itself of Japan with full service leases and things like that and getting in and out of cars quicker. It's still, a, there's no simple answer and there's no right answer, but more flexibility in a lease needs to happen for the automakers to continue to stay relevant as cars become more and more expensive. And I didn't talk a lot about how this data information gets sent to the cloud and then it also gets beamed to the dealership. So most of my experience is with Lexus, but Toyota's is, is the same way. So there's a system or a service called Service Connect where if the car has an error, and it can be really handy for customers. For example, I know of an issue, this guy was on the highway in his LS500, the car just shut down while he was driving on the highway, and the dealership was able to beam into his car 
to see what was going on. The dealership was able to tell him uh, that it was okay, it was safe to drive back to the dealership and they would look into it uh, when they got there, but it was some sort of error code that happened and the, all the lights went on and everything. But it's, it's a good thing that the dealership can use that for the safety of its customers. And it's also a money-making thing, you guys have to think. So let's say they buy this Lexus and three years later, let's say it, once it's out of warranty, let's say something goes wrong in it and it sends an error to the dealership, the dealership could call that person potentially and be like, oh, it looks like your transmission's going bad. You need to come in, you know? Who knows how far this can go, but I think we're just at the beginning stages of this data sharing where when you get in your car, it's like the phone. Our phones are always listening to us. Your cars are gonna be no different with this Amazon web sharing. It doesn't stop with Toyota, guys. I went over to Automotive News to see what they had to say. In July, AWS announced its partnership with Volkswagen to develop the automaker's cloud-based software and data portal. And they've also have been working with Aptiv, Panasonic, NVIDIA, Uber, and Avis and self-driving heavy truck startups such as Embark and Too Simple. More information is always better. And that's what these legacy automakers kind of struggle with sometimes is being able to generate the information they need to make better cars. These startup ones are a little bit more tech savvy and there's not a whole lot of old momentum keeping them back. They're able to use these data mining services. I don't even, I don't even know if data mining is the right term, but I think you guys catch my drift. They're able to use these to quickly make changes in their products and their services. And this crazy article here, Honda and Nissan were targets for a merger in Japan. Some Japanese officials wanted the two automakers to merge, but both companies swiftly rejected the idea according to the report. I'm not gonna read the article, I'm just gonna kind of share my thoughts here. Uh, Nissan's not doing well. If you guys have been living on a rock, Hate to break the news to you, Nissan has not been doing well for a very long time. Um, and Infinity as a result is one of the first companies on the chopping block. That's what my gut's telling me. But Honda doesn't have a whole lot of alliances within Japan and Japanese officials were trying to get the CEOs, the higher ups of each company to get together to form an alliance. Well, if you didn't know, Nissan is an alliance with Renault and Mitsubishi. So yeah, they do have an alliance with Mitsubishi. Um, Mitsubishi, if you haven't heard, isn't doing well either. So officials try to get these two longtime automakers to come together to work um, on a lot of things. Honda, however, doesn't need Nissan's help uh, as much as Nissan needs Honda's help. And Honda's not gonna, like they're dead weight at this point, Nissan. They're very difficult. It's gonna be a hard road for them to come back from uh, with all of their struggles, mainly financial struggles, but there's a lot of other things uh, with their leadership that has not been good for the company. And I can see where the Japanese officials, the politicians, whatever you wanna call them, I could see them wanting them to merge and get rid of the French Renault, but Renault at this point seems to be carrying Nissan pretty hard and that alliance, I don't know if it's good for any of them, but they're managing at the, this point in time. And once COVID is all over, who knows where they'll be, but uh, Honda doesn't need them and Honda doesn't need their electrification expertise with Nissan. So Nissan has been, the forerun the front runner i should say of the japanese automakers when it comes to battery electric vehicles we know honda and toyota have taken more of the conservative hybrid route they don't need nissan to tell, teach them about motors or engines or anything like that nissan doesn't bring anything to honda's table so honda actually teamed up with general motors for electrification as they can split the costs here in north america for fully electric vehicles. Um, so it'll be interesting to see Honda and General Motors work together. I know a lot of you guys aren't excited about that, but I know a lot of you guys wouldn't be excited if Honda started working with Nissan either. So very interesting times. That is never going, I don't ever see Nissan and Honda merging uh, or Mitsubishi, gosh, God bless Mitsubishi. I, I want them to succeed because it's kind of like the underdog story. Like Mitsubishi is a much smaller automaker, but in terms of size, Mitsubishi is one of the largest companies in the entire world. So anyways, guys, a lot of a lot of me talking today. I hope you're okay with that. I just want to get my thoughts on Amazon and Toyota working together to make better Toyota products. And now Amazon has all of their information. So very interesting and it just 
one last thing, it's, it's just silly because it took us so long to get Android Auto and Apple CarPlay and Toyota and Lexus products because of the information sharing. And then here they are working with Amazon to just absolutely siphon all the information they can from their consumers and their buyers and their customers. So interesting things. What do you guys think? I'll see you in comments below. Is this a good thing that Amazon's working with uh, Toyota to make better vehicles and better services? I hope so. I hope so. I hope it makes a better product, a better world for us all. And I hope they don't conquer us as a result. But I'll see you guys in the comments as always. Thank you so much for watching and take care of yourselves. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.